and I don't discard them. I mean, those garlics, I'm going to use them in another dish. Maybe if I make some hummus, and it's nice because they are now, you know, chick. So this I save. And you have to count, I have eight of them. So one, two, three, one more. Yes. And then I'm taking out the greens. It's hot. Ouch. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to start actually heating the oven. Okay, so what happened is my regular oven broke down really last week, end of last week. And kind of stressed a little bit because I had the cooking demo, Thanksgiving is coming. But uh, luckily, um, Carrie had this tiny little uh, electric oven in our garage, you were going to donate it. Yeah. And so I borrowed it and I've been cooking in it since then. Uh, so it's a bit smaller, but it's it's just perfect. Ooh. Okay. So now I'm going to put the baguette. So you have bread that you, um, I mean, old bread. Actually, I bought this one. <sighs> I bought this one on Saturday and I just let it on the counter so it's really hot, which is good. So I'm putting it there. I have some cauliflower. And I already cut in pieces. I have some wild rice that I pre-cooked. And some fresh parsley. So I'm putting all of that in my pot. Mixing that, actually, I don't really need to cook anymore at that point. Switch it off. My goal here is to get the bread to soak all the broth. So you will notice I've done... Um, I'm using my Dutch oven and I love using that because usually I can do everything in one pot. I can cook on the stove and then go in the oven with it. But because I have this small oven and I'm actually going to take a, a smaller baking dish. Okay. Looks like everything has been soaked. So I'm going to move it. And maybe I cannot do everything. But look how, I mean, there is carrots, there is celery, there is onion, there is cauliflower, plenty of yummy food. And for those who are gluten-free, you could just use, what oh, is going to fit it all? You could just use, you know, uh, gluten-free. No, you don't. You, I think I can put everything. Well, okay, maybe not. Okay. And that's going into the oven for 40 minutes. So hopefully we will have it ready by the end of the class. Okay, I'm going to set the timer. Don't be, no, no, okay, no timer. Um, okay, so now let's jump to the centerpiece, okay. the Wellington. So I have already prepared a lot of things uh, in advance because it requires quite some chopping. I mean, chopping fresh herbs do take some time. You could, of course, there's a, a shortcut of, um, you know, by using dry. But basically what I have, all the ingredients are shallots with herbs. And I have a lot of herbs here. I have thyme, rosemary, 
sage and tarragon. Um, for those, if you don't like tarragon because it has a very special taste, I love it, uh, but you could use parsley. Uh, so I you know, sauteed all the shallots, put the, the herbs when the shallots were soft. I put some garlic, um, I have some white one uh, I put in there and a little bit of brown sugar. So this is my first things to mix. Then of course, the mushrooms here. I mean, you could be go as fancy or I mean, as simple or as fancy as you want. You could just use simply creamy mushrooms. You need to dice them in very small, saute them in your pan. Here I want a mix of creamy, oyster mushrooms mm. and shiitake mushrooms. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, a bit more uh, fancy, but you know, it's a fancy dinner tonight. So I'm putting all that in the bowl. Then I am making it meaty using the Beyond sausages. And that add really like you know, an extra hump to, uh, to the, the dish. Uh, I'm using the brat original, but you could use the sweet Italian also. That would be really nice with all the herbs. Just don't use the spicy one. Um, and this is one sausages that I kind of crumble, cooked and saute also a little bit. Um, I need melted butter. So I have a little piece of uh, mucose butter here. I'm just going to put it in a microwave to melt it. Right. While this is going on, I'm going to add the nuts. Um, I have uh, walnut and pecan. Mm. So same thing, dice. Because it's a mushroom dish, I want to enhance the flavor a little bit by adding truffle oil. This is white truffle oil, but you know the black would be fine. I'm putting a teaspoon in it. Um, my butter has melted. I'm adding that to the mix. And I am mixing everything together. So the shallots, the mushrooms, the sausages, the nuts, And the, the, the smell, is, it really smell is wonderful. Okay. So based on how moist it is, and I think it's a little bit moist, uh, not too much. I mean, there is no juice, but I'm going to add a little bit of breadcrumbs um, because I, you're going to see, I'm going to kind of mold it. So I don't, I want it to stay together. So I'm going to add maybe, so this is a quart cup, a half, so eight of a cup. What kind of breadcrumbs are you using? So those are um, just like wheat flour, I mean, and this wheat flour with salt. Uh, make sure there is no egg. There is some a lot of breadcrumbs with eggs in, in it. And these are finely ground breadcrumbs. Yes, yes, very fine. And the goal is more to avoid it to be too moist. And don't put too much because you don't want it to be too dry either. If it turns out too dry, what could you do to bring back the moisture? Um, Just in case. Yeah. I mean, I would play a little bit with the fat content, you know, the, the butter and, and the oil. Um, if it's really, really too dry, I mean, you know, it's, it's mushroom. So that's never going to be super dry. That's true. Uh, actually, the pollen is... With mushrooms, sometimes it could be too wet. Um, okay, so now the fun part of the Wellington, I mean, is of course that, but it's going to make it. Uh, oh, I want to show you the little mini portobello mushrooms that I already baked in the oven. 
they are they have, I bake them with a little bit of olive oil, lots of herbs, the same herb mix that I put uh, in the stuffing, lots of garlic, as you can see, um, salt and pepper. And um, so we are going to use them inside the wallet. Let me wash my hands very well because I'm really going to use my hands now. Okay, so in the mushroom wellington, big part of it is of course the content, but the other big part is the puff pastry. So it's one of the things that's really hard to do. <laughs> so you may have time and make it yourself from scratch, but I'm taking a shortcut and buying it uh, from the store. Uh, the, the ones from Pepperidge Farm are actually vegan. They use oil and no butter, so which is excellent for our purpose. Uh, they come in, actually there is two sheets in one. They, they come in a, in a little square like that that was folded, I just unfolded. It's about 10 by 10. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rectangle because I'm going to fold it in two, right? To make our little Wellington. So a little bit flour. And I'm going to stretch the dough. It's already 10 by, yeah, about 10 inch. So I'm trying to do a 10 by 14, which is kind of the length of my mat here. Get a little bit in the center here. Here, I've never found, I mean, if you find, if anyone know of a gluten-free puff pastry, I would really like to know, because I looked for some, um, and I was not really able to find a vegan one that was gluten-free. Okay, so here, the goal is going, I'm going to stuff inside that. Okay, so the middle is here. So what I'm going to stuff is really here because I want a margin about an inch around. So I'm going to put the stuffing really here. Okay. Um, Isabel, can you tell us where you got your measuring mat? Or is that one you got from home? No, no, I, I actually, I bought it online uh, on Amazon. I buy so many things on Amazon. Um, so you can look at, I mean, it's called Dan, Dania and Dean. So if you look at that on Amazon, you will find Okay, that. I'll look at it later and, and we'll send it out. All How's right. that? <laughs> I know it looks really nice. It's, it, what is nice, it's a silicone mat, so you can put odd things on it and it's not going to burn. The only thing is, of course, Oh, one thing I should have told you, between the, the mat and the dough, I put um, parchment paper. And this is the act you're going to see that is really important here because once I'm done with my Wellington, I want to bring, put it you know, on my baking sheet to go in the oven and it's going to be all full. So having yes. something you can pull is really nice. Okay, so let's see. So this is where you kind of play like play dough. I'm trying to mold my, I think I can put a little bit more. And here you really need to use your hand. I mean, there is no really shortcut. So I'm trying to keep this one inch apart away from the sides because this is where I'm going to close my Wellington. I'm ready to pack it nice. Let's, let's see. Nice, okay. Okay, so now that's for the first layer. The second layer, I'm taking my little portobellos. So you go for like a very small portobello or in Okay, there was a question. Uh, how tall is the stuffing? How tall is are you making it? I think right now it's about what half an inch. 
a bit more an inch uh, about three quarters of an inch maybe three quarters of an inch. Okay. listen to this we all have a different answer okay but it's not finished i'm going to put uh, the those little portobellos or big creamies depending on what you can find the store and really stuck them there so those are going to be the surprises when you cut. And what would be so nice, and I'm going to show you, is when you are going to slide, you have this, you know, all the stuffing, but you have this beautiful slice of full, you know, uh, mushroom. And me, yeah, it'd be nice and solid. And and I'm pushing it because I like to, I mean, some people like to remove the stem. I really think it's nice and tasty, so I keep it. Okay. All right, layer two. I'm pressing everything nice and tight. Okay, are you ready for layer three? This is becoming a little bit more difficult. And a bit more messy. So now you're covering up the, the um, mushrooms you just put on. That's correct. The solid mushrooms. Yes. So now it's Oops. getting tall. And I'm making a, yeah, it's getting tall. Make, cooking in the kitchen is always messy and that's fine. I'm going to do a little bit more. If I'm probably going to have some stuffing, um, yeah, filling left over. And this is fine because this is so good with pasta or something oh. or just on a toast. Yes. So it's totally not wasted. Okay, I think this is as high as I can go. <laughs> Peter is doing artisting shots. All right. So I think this is what I'm, I'm going to, to do. What I, uh, Going to clean up a little bit the side. I really want no crumbs on the dough because I want to see it. Okay. All right, now, ta-da, I'm going to close uh, it. Hope it closed. Magic. So. Oh, sorry. Before closing it, well, let me wash my hands again. I have to seal it. And do you know how to seal the dough? Is it usually by using water or milk. And so I'm using milk. I'm using soy milk. So with a brush. Yes. It's egg wash. Yes. Well, the egg yes. wash, exactly. And uh, the vegan egg wash is really, because what makes it nice also in the egg wash the, on the outside is the protein like you know caramelizing and become, becoming golden so the protein of i mean any protein does that so you could use you know soy milk and the protein of the soy will do that too all right so here i'm like using the milk like glue All right, remove those little guys because they're going to be a problem. Did you use aquafaba to seal? I've never tried. Um, I guess that could be an experiment. Yeah. Oops. I'm stepping on the nuts. All right, now let's second try. I really want those to match to, okay, not bad. And that's about an inch on this each side to pinch down. Yeah, about, and I'm going to make it symmetrical in a minute. Okay, so here it's like, you know, when you make gifts, there is always, just make a special, um, how do you say, fold. Okay, so here. Okay. 
Okay, four. And now everything is good. Well, I want. I saw there was some air in there. Okay, there's a question. How tall is it now? I would say at least three is here. But hey, look at that. Two inch and a half. Two and a half inches. <laughs> but this, I see there is some air in it. I want to remove it. So I open it, remove the air, okay, and close it again. Okay, to make it extra sealed, I like to use a fork and really like press like that. You see? The nice thing, it make it pretty too. Yeah, like a nice pie crust. Hmm? I said it looks like a nice pie crust. Yeah. So this is a nice way to seal. Okay, now I want to make it pretty because it's, you know, it's, so I have about that size here. So I'm going to cut, remove the dough that I don't need. So it looks nice. And here. Okay, and now with that dome, you can make little uh, decoration on top of your. Um... So I'm just going to make one quickly, just a little snake. But you could, you know, like with a nice cookie cutter, make, um, I mean, make stars, hearts, leaves, whatever you want. Okay, and to make it stick to the to the dough, again, use the milk as a glue. Or you could either do it like that. And that. Well, I'm not going to decorate the whole thing, but you get the stuff how, uh, how to do it. Um, so, what I want to show you still. Okay, so now you clean all that. You cut the paper that you don't need. Yeah, you leave the parchment on the pan as you cook it? Yes. So now, um, I mean, I'm not going to bring in the oven because the oven is busy, but I would put it, you know, but the thing is now I can carry that, you know, which is really important. Um, otherwise you're going to break the, the content. So that goes in the oven for about a good hour. So it really takes time to get everything. I mean, it's already warm inside, but you want the dough uh, around uh, to cook. So this morning, I made one to show you the end results. So, ta-da! Look at that beautiful um, pastry, or Wellington, mushroom Wellington. So now it's, this looks like that as you take it out of the oven. Uh, so when it's still nice and warm, just before you're going to serve, you actually take some of the truffle oil um. with a brush. You're going just to spread it on your... So it gives it a nice glow. And then because it's warm, you have the smell of the truffle oil. So when you uh, serve it to the table, it really... Very appetizing. So that's a little trick. You don't need a lot of oil, just a little bit like that. Okay. So don't you think this is like so beautiful? I mean, 
so much beautiful having than having a piece of you know Sophie or not the bird on, on your table. Oh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> okay, now I want to show you how it looks in sunlight. So this is the moment of truth. <laughs> Ooh. And that's why I like really to put the old mushroom in the middle because it's just beautiful to serve. Okay. So that's, you know, I mean, if you don't impress your guest with that mushroom well in done, I don't know what would. Oh, God. Uh, there is, of course, you know, a ton of recipe of mushroom Wellington. This is my favorite. It's really, it's really meaty, uh, and especially for people, you know, that are new to plant based. Uh, I think this is a very nice option. Uh, question: yes. Do you plate it in slices or display on plate with a knife for them to cut themselves? Uh, you know, it really depends where, how you want to do your setup. Um, I, I think I, I I like to serve the whole thing and then slice it at the table, but it, it yeah really the depends. presentation yeah it really depends how what what kind of you know look you're going for. And Mary says, um, "What's your address? I'm coming over." <laughs> I'm going to give your address because you're going to. Oh I great! Then people will follow me home. <laughs> I have <two> Wellington now. <laughs> Um, what I wanted to say, so there is many recipes out there. Uh, another one that I hesitated to show you uh, tonight uh, was one with butternut squash and goat cheese uh, in it. So instead of the sausages, you will add like uh, you know butternut squash that you roasted before, and then you use some uh, BioLife feta cheese, and that's really good too. But I thought, I mean, I would, I would like that, but as a feast. As the centerpiece, you want something a bit yeah. more meaty like this one. Uh, but, you know. Would you serve some type of a gravy over it or with it? As yes, a... you could have, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have a delicious Pinot Noir merchant uh, <laughs> um, sauce that would go very well. But any any gravy, I mean, it's part of all the, the spread that you're going to, to put on the table. How many people is that for? So again, depends what you have on the side. If you have like a lot of side, like, you know, roasted veggies, a stuffed casserole. By the way, how's it going? Ooh, it's starting to look very nice. Um, uh, you know, then maybe one would be enough for like four to six people, maybe if you get a slice. If it's really, I mean, better and I, we tried several of those recipes before. We can eat that in one evening. <laughs> <laughs> But that's really the only thing we eat, you know, where there was a little green salad next to it. Um, it just smells so good. I can probably eat the whole thing if I had yeah. a few hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to show you, because we do have some time, which is excellent. Um, I want to show how to do the green bean casserole now. Um, so, <laughs> Thanks. So I start. Hmm? Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. If you leave, if you leave out the Beyond Meat, would you replace it with something else, or just remove it from the recipe? I would add the baby more mushrooms. Uh, that would be a good thing, uh, and maybe add a bit more walnuts, because basically it's one sausages. Uh, I don't know exactly the size of it, but I would take. Kind of you know, that size and replace it. Yeah. Like mushrooms and, and nuts. Yeah, because those would be the really fillers. Right. Yeah. 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 Maybe soy crumbles. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the nice thing about cooking and making your own thing is you can create what you want and put what you like in there. Um, so it's it's like the the stuffing. You know, if you don't like cauliflower, just put another veggie. Um, Okay, the green bean casserole, another traditional dish. So I prepared already, I have uh, onions, uh, creamy mushrooms, a little bit garlic. Um, do we have any herbs in there? No, I don't think so. And then of course the green bean. So I cooked all that ahead of time. 
But of course, what does make it a casserole is the cream that you're going to put on it. So usually, typically, it's butter, uh, flour, and milk. Basically, you're making a room uh, sauce uh, that you're going to add on top of that. So I'm going to show you how to do the vegan version of it. Um, so I'm going into my blender corner because my friends, when I make anything that is creamy, uh, I use cashews. Yes, yes. I'm going to have a question. Did you saute the beans or bake to cook ahead? Actually, I skimmed them. Okay. Yeah, I saute everything else, but the beans, you I steam them. Right. Yeah. Because you want them still crispy and, yes. and fresh tasting. That's correct. But, you know, the way you... The thing here in preparing those is really the way you do it traditionally or whatever, you know, and whatever you have in your family as a tradition and you like that, do the same. Really what I'm going to show you is more how to make the creamy part vegan because that is, you know, already just veggies. So, okay, cashews. Cashews are my friend. Cashews can be milked and become a rich creamy sauce. So... You just need a blender. I have a super high speed blender, so I don't need to soak my cashews, but if you don't have a super uh, powerful blender, that's fine. Just soak the cashew for a couple of hours before. All right, so here, what I'm going to add is two and a half cup of water. And the difference uh, than a normal cream is I'm adding some uh, veggie broth. So this is homemade veggie broth um, that I'm adding to the mix. And was that about a tablespoon? Yeah, it's a tablespoon. So it, it really depends of whatever your uh, broth you're using. I, they have all the proportion with the water. Because it's homemade, it's my own you know, proportion. Are those unsalted cashews? Yeah, raw and unsalted, correct. Okay, so I'm putting all that in my blender. You're going to have no sound for about a minute because Zoom is going to remove because it's too uh, loud. Do you recommend hot or cold water when you do cold. that? Well, I don't think it really matters, but yeah. yeah. Was that for the soaking or? It was for the soaking. So, so soaking the nuts in, uh, in hot water helps soak faster. But for blending, it's cold water. All right, let's go. Ta -da! I do have a nice cream. So that, that's the magic. If you've never blended cashew and make your own milk uh, or cream, this is magic. Okay, so I'm going back to the stove and I'm going to heat because the cool thing about the okay, cashew. Just, um, sound just went out. Yes, it oh, should that's be back okay. now. Yeah. Yeah, Zoom removed the sounds when it's too loud. So that's why you could not hear a thing. But now you should hear me back, right? Yes. Uh. Okay, so here, so the cool thing about cashew, not only you can blend them and make that, you know, milk, uh, but it has starch and fat. So basically, you don't need to add butter because you have the fat in the cashew and you don't need to add flour because there is starch. I, I love it. It's like all in one. 
Um, So normally I would add some salt, but my uh, homemade um, veggie broth is very salty. So I'm not adding uh, that. I'm going to add some pepper though. And the magic of cashews is, so normally you want to do that at low temperature, but I'm going to do it I, for the sake of time, but don't do that at home, <laughs> is it is going to thicken your cashew cream. So I have like, it's more like liquid, like, you know, a pourable cream. And now I'm just going to let it thicken to a certain consistency, I mean, to the consistency I want for a casserole. And I have to whisk because I'm doing it super hot. Has anyone done blend their own nuts to make uh, any plant-based milk? So far now. I'm sure some of you have. Yep. Everyone, if you're not on chat, make sure you go back on chat because they put the survey out on it. And also there's a lot of good um, information on the chat. Well, and that's how you can ask, ask questions too. Okay, I do make oat milk, but not nut milks. Okay. I want to try to do oat milk once. I've not done it yet. Oh, and I save the nut mush to add to my oatmeal or other cooking. Okay, yeah. So that's the thing is if you have you know a blender that does not pulverize the nut, you always, you have to strain and then you get this, you know, nice you know, nut mush, like, like you say, and then you can do many things with that. The chickens love those <laughs> because, <laughs> um, but you can do those uh, like Indian uh, dessert, you know, the, the oh, sweets yeah. they have, so good. Okay, starting to thicken. Yeah, the magic test with the silicone blade. What yes. it sticks to it or not? I, I, yeah. I want to start to see thicken. You see, I don't know if you can see, started to thicken a little bit. I want a little bit more thick. I'm sorry. I mean, like with any milk, you know, you don't want it to burn or to attach to the bottom. It's 5.50 now, if you want to know the time. Okay, thank you. My mousse done there. So oh, like, that looks good. I would like to show it to you, thicken, and then just pour it on the green beans. And then I think I will have to show you everything. Okay, right now it's too hot. So the thing is that is going, because I'm going to put my casserole into uh, the oven. So it's going to thicken, so I'm going to stop now. It's thick enough to go in the casserole and it's going to thicken even more as I uh, bake it. So here is my casserole. I'm going to pour. Ooh, now oh, that looks nice. Maybe, but it depends how much creamy you want. I mean, I'm from France, so <laughs> cream, cream more everywhere. cream, more cream. Maybe not all the cream, though. That looks good. Okay, that is going in the oven for about half an hour. Again, I can't do it now because it's busy. Uh, when it's going to after half an hour, you took it, uh, you took it out of the oven. And then you add fried onions on top. Uh, those are from Trader Joe's. Um, 
You could make your own fried onions. I'm again. I would eat them. <laughs> um, and then you go back in the oven for five minutes, and you have a dish. What temperature do you cook the bean casserole? Um, doo -doo, let me tell you. 350 degrees. Okay, talking about baking, I think this is done. We are probably very close to the 40 minutes. Let's switch it up. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. That looks beautiful. So here we have, we have, you know, the roasted veggies, the center peas, the stuffing, the green bean casserole. It's not really done yet, but almost. And yeah, like, you can have, you know, of course, some gravy, cranberry sauce, of course. Um, so I hope you can, you guys can enjoy, you know, a fun uh, and delicious Thanksgiving and any holidays because you can do that at Christmas. Well, actually, you don't have to wait for the holiday to do any of that. Uh, you know, you don't have to make the whole thing. I mean, like I was saying before, if we can eat that with a nice serve that with a nice green salad, and that's you know a nice dish. Yeah, uh, I think you could do the stuffing by itself as a another dish. You're getting a lot of thank yous. Yeah. Um, do you want to open it up? Yes. So let me go back here. Okay. So I mute Peter. Mute myself. Hello. And I put the video back. Okay. If you have any questions you want to ask now, you can unmute yourself and ask. Um, the cooking part is done. It smells so good. <laughs> Can you guys hear me fine? Oops. Yeah, and thank you, Carrie, for my wonderful <laughs> assistant. She's amazing. And my husband, that's of behind, course. behind the camera. The cameraman, the IT man, the question man. And so you guys, so I'm going to send all the recipe to the library so they can send them to you in a follow-up email. Uh, I believe we recorded that. Uh, video yes? yes so i will uh, we will share that with you also so you can replay uh and um you are my email address maybe you can tap it's already there. on uh, okay i sent him one of your links okay so it's isabel my first name at chlorophyll.org uh, i'm you know uh, contact me uh, we, we you can also sign up for all our recipes and food event on our uh, cuisine page um yeah and thank you so much uh jennifer uh thank you so much lisa and karen for inviting me uh tonight uh with you guys no one wants to share anything oh oh, oh that's okay. thank you thank you isabel and and team and thank you as always the plant-based advocates we're always happy to have you cook with us on zoom <laughs> Oh, I think I can have Peter in the videos. Yay, here is our cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you very much. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Ah, and send us picture if you do the dish, please send pictures. We would love to see that. Wait, save the chat. Yeah, I think the, the side is the chat. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's just uh... yeah. I linked someone to someone. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Okay. That was great. Yeah. That was awesome. I should have had a snack before sitting down to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I can't wait. We can do a class like in public so we can share and taste all the food. That would be yeah. fun.
I was like, oh, this was poor planning. So <laughs> I, did, I did record it. I started about 15 minutes in. So once we process the recording, I can leave a little note for people about what happened before hmm. the recording started. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. I forgot to I forgot to hit start. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's okay. Uh, yeah. And send it to me as soon as, I mean, when you have it, or so I can yeah. put it on my website too. Wonderful. We'd be happy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you again. And uh, have a wonderful evening. Thank you. You too. Bye. Thanks, everyone.